In this brief mini tutorial, I will be explaining some advanced search techniques, which uh, you will be needing to demonstrate in your assignment one, and which also may help you in future research projects. We use the thesaurus tool in order to find different search terms that describe the same concept or topic. And in A+, in for, on the Informant database, we actually find it when we click on the advanced search tab. So up the top here, we have the option to go to the thesaurus. And by clicking on that, we can see that there's only one choice here of our thesauri. So we are going to enter in a term, and in this case, it's going to be inquiry. And we're also going to include term variations because that's going to give us the widest search possible. So when I search the thesaurus, it tells me that if I'm using, if I'm wanting to look up inquiry learning, I need to use the term inquiry, inquiry training, inquiry based learning. I use this term inquiry. Because this is an Australian database, we spell it with an I. And so if I'm using the term inquiry, they prefer and I'll get better results if I use the term spelt with an I. We can see that it gets interesting in the fact that if I'm looking at narrative analysis, which is something completely different, they suggest that I use the term narrative inquiry. That's how they have uh, sub, um, given the subject headings that they have given in this database to describe narrative analysis. Uh, for example, if you were looking at collaborative inquiry, which uh, they're suggesting that we use the term cooperative learning, because this is a subject term that has been chosen to describe articles in this particular database. A community inquiry is something quite different again. And so they're suggesting that there's a wide variety of terms that we might use that will bring up related resources and articles to do with communities of inquiry. So if you were um, doing a research on a community of inquiry, you'd have a lot more different terms that you could investigate. So the thesaurus here can also give you broader or narrower terms. And I'm going to show you an example. If we go to the letter I and scroll down, if, for example, I was searching for ICT in education, it suggests that narrower terms for this very broad area could include computer-assisted teaching, computer-assisted testing, computer-managed teaching, micro-worlds, online education, online learning or virtual worlds. And if I wanted to go even broader than ICT and education, they suggest that I search using the term technology integration. Now, if I click on one of these terms, it should automatically take me to yeah, the entry in the database. It also gives me related terms that also are associated with this. And then I can go from there and I can say, well, I want to search this subject term and it will look up all of the uh, articles that have used the subject heading online education. So you can see, I know that's not that's taken me away from the inquiry learning, but just as another example, the thesaurus is actually quite a useful tool, especially if you're not familiar with all of the different permutations of a particular topic. I'm going to use the thesaurus now within the ProQuest database, and this also is accessible under the advanced search term. And here it is here, thesaurus. So again, this uh, tool is going to help me find alternative or narrower or broader terms that I can use when I'm searching uh, for articles associated with inquiry or inquiry learning. So I've typed in the term inquiry here. And I'm looking for search terms that contain the words inquiry. And if I just go to search, you can see here that we've got some results. Um, this little box means that there's in further information available. So if I click on that, I can see that I can use inquiry when I'm searching for inquiry training, which is an older term, uh, also for inquiry based learning. Um, I, it is also related to these particular terms. So these are, are terms that might be associated with the concept of inquiry. And you can see here that inquiry is quite a broad uh, word and it may not be directly referring to inquiry learning, 
but we have things like questioning techniques, information seeking, learning strategies. So these are the ones that we're interested in, uh, in searching. So if I tick those, they are the ones that I will be able to add to my search. So if I click on add to search now, we can see here that it's looking for, it's used, the, uh, it's exploded the term inquiry and you might've seen that term exploded there. And it's looking for articles that use the main subject of questioning techniques or information seeking or learning strategies. So this is a different way of constructing a search uh, strategy or a search term, a complex search term, that's for sure. So let's do a search again. And if I go back to find, we can see, I'm just going to explore this explode for you. Now explode, when I tick on that, uh, that means when I add it to the search that uh, it's going to look for all of the narrower terms associated with inquiry. So it did include that, but it also said, and I'm also looking for these smaller ones here. So if I uh, just get rid of that and get rid of that and leave that up there, if I search for this, it's going to bring up for me all of the sub, uh, articles that also have associated terms to do with inquiry. So we've got here questions and questioning. We've got um, inquiry based science. We've got experiments, which is certainly an aspect of inquiry. You can see a strong emphasis here on maths and science, uh, high school efficacy in inquiry and lab skills. But here, this is an interesting one, perceptions of restorative justice. So I'm not sure where the inquiry comes in. If I have a look here to see if, uh, here we go, we've got inquiry as one of the subject terms. So obviously there was some sort of investigation, whether or not they're talking about inquiry learning as what we're looking for, is something different. But you can see there that that was a much broader search because we had that exploded term. And that's one of the uh, strategies that you can use from the thesaurus. Now, another interesting thing, if we go back to advanced search and return to the thesaurus, I'm going to this time, you might have remembered last time when I looked at the A plus thesaurus, I looked at the I and one of the major search terms was ICT in education. Now, that's a very Australian term and Australian terminology. And as this is an American uh, database, you'd be interested to see that it doesn't feature at all. So that is a great example of how our terminology uh, in Australia can, um, we need to broaden our terms oftentimes if we're searching and be aware of the geography or the, of the culture that, of, that we're searching within. So if I did do a search for ICT, let's just see, it, it's coming up with words with ICT in the middle it doesn't recognize it on its own. If I search for information communication technology, again, it just doesn't, it doesn't recognize this as a, um, a common term. And so I may need to start thinking about how I can phrase this in a way that is broader. So perhaps information technology, and then I can go from there and start exploring to break that down. So just another interesting observation about how the nationality of the database can influence your searches. Now let's look at some advanced search operators that can be used across uh, databases and Google and Google Scholar searches. The first that we're going to investigate is the concept of truncation. And as you can see from the name, truncation means to truncate or finish early or abbreviate a word and replace the end part of that word with an asterisk or a symbol that means and other letters. Now, truncation is also sometimes known as stemming because we're using the stem of the word and then allowing the ending of the word to be interpreted in many different ways. So for example, we can 
use an asterisk to truncate the beginning of the word library to library, which then allows the search engine or the database to search for library, libraries or librarian, all of which have the same beginning stem, but have different endings. This is also handy for words where we have spelling differences. So for example, behavior can be spelt with uh, I-O-U-R or I-O-R in the United States. And so by putting an asterisk and using truncation, we can make sure that our search looks for both types of spelling, uh, behavior spelt the Australian or the UK way and the American way, and also that extends to longer words such as behavioural, which also have that difference in spelling. It allows us to look for different types of um, words when we're talking about uh, endings. So create can become creator, creative, creativity, and literary can, be, can look for literacy, literacies, literate. But we do have to be careful with something like literary because that will also bring up searches for literature, which is something quite different from literacy related, but quite different in terms of if we're looking for something specifically about literacy and literacies and how to encourage our students to become more literate. Uh, we may not be focusing on literature. So just a, a tip there. A wildcard is essentially a similar tool to the truncation, but for an, a letter missing in the middle of uh, a word. So if for this case, we could use a question mark to stand either for an S or a Z in organization to cover a variety of spellings, or also we could use it in women and search for woman and women in one search. Proximity is using a search operator to uh, associate two terms which need to be in proximity to one another, but which don't need to be uh, side by side or in an exact phrase. So as we go through the examples, this will become more apparent to what, to what I mean by this. Now we're going to be looking at how truncation and wildcard searches are used in the databases Informit and ProQuest and the search engine Google. So in the databases, truncation operates with an asterisk symbol and uh, it can be used to substitute an unlimited number of characters. Now we use a number, uh, a numeral, to indicate the number of characters that we want to, uh, it to search for. So the asterisk by itself means an unlimited number of characters. So electric with an asterisk means that find any word that begins with E-L-E-C-T-R and has any number of letters afterwards. So for example, we'll find electric, electricity, electron, electrolysis, electrocute. Whereas color, when we're looking for an asterisk here, uh, we're saying we're just looking for one letter and they've actually used the truncation symbol in a, way, in a way that I would prefer to use a wild card. So they've used it in the middle of the word there because um, they've added the R at the end, as you can see, to find color or color spelt differently. The wild cards are used either at the end of the word, like a truncation symbol, or in the, in the middle of a word, for example, woman, and it's a question mark that can, but this substitutes only a single character. And so this is how it is different to the truncation, which can symbolize an unlimited number of characters. You can combine a wildcard and a truncation symbol so that, for example, you can see here it's looking for project, projects, protected and protection, as well as projected and projection by putting in these different symbols. It may be difficult to imagine when we might need these things, uh, but it's sometimes handy to know about these strategies so that if we do want to cover ourselves with different spellings or if we're not perhaps sure of the exact spelling, we can use these symbols. Google doesn't actually recognize truncation symbols because it uses automatic stemming. It looks for the word you type in plus any additional letters on the end. So it's basically uh, adding in these things intuitively for you. However, uh, what you type in must be a complete word. So uh, you can't type in half a word and it will complete the word for you. So military will find 
uh, military, militaries, but not militarism or militaristic. And psychology will find, uh, not find psycholo psychological or psychologist. So it is a little bit more limited in that way. Because you can't use truncation symbols, you may need to type in those variations. However, it does seem that Google is searching for synonyms at the same time. So if you're searching for military, it may well return something to do with army or air force. However, these results are often erratic. And this is why Google is better used as a search engine than it is for a really rigorous academic uh, um, search. Proximity is perhaps one of the most complex of the advanced search operators, and you may not uh, see a need for it in your frequent searching, but it is sometimes just handy to have it in the back of your mind so that you know that it exists and you can look it up and refresh yourself if you're doing a particularly in-depth search or a, or a very tricky search. So in Informit, we use operators to find terms in a specific order, and the operators that it uses are the percentage symbol, the exclamation mark, and the at symbol. So the percentage symbol, and all of these have a space either side of them, finds terms next to each other in any order. So for example, you might be looking for uh, research about uh, research skills, so developing research skills for students. And you don't mind which order these words come up in the title. So it might be how to develop research skills in your students, or it might be how to develop your, the skills of your students with research. So it's not about the order of the words, and so you could use the percentage sign. Sometimes though, it does matter whether the order of the words is the same. And for example, if you were searching for information literacy, it would make a lot more sense than if you were searching for, uh, than if you put in the term literacy information. And so when you want the words in that order next to each other, you would use the exclamation mark. Then you can use the numeral 10 to find those terms, but within 10 words of each other. So for example, you might be looking for a search that includes the terms inquiry, primary, and education. And in this case, these words need to be within 10 words of each other, but they can come in any order, and in which case you would use percentage 10, because it doesn't matter whether it says uh, inquiry, education, primary, or uh, primary, education, inquiry. It, it really doesn't matter as long as all three of them are there and close to each other. Whereas uh, if you were specifically looking for science uh, inquiry research, then you would probably want those words in that order because research uh, science inquiry might mean something different. The at symbol finds terms similar in spelling to your terms. So this is useful if you're not sure of the spelling or alternatively, if, it, for example, you're looking for something like woman and women, and rather than using the wild card, you can use the at symbol. So it's just another way of achieving a similar goal. ProQuest doesn't use those particular symbols. It uses near, uh, near slash n, or capital N slash little n. It looks for documents that contain two search terms in any order within a specified number of words apart. So you do need to have the number in there. So it needs to be capital N or the word near slash you must have a number after it. If you, if you have the word near, you can just use uh, the whole word near. You don't always have a number, but if you have a capital N, you must provide a number. Otherwise it'll just search for articles with a capital N in it. Uh, rather than using it as a proximity indicator. So for example, if you're looking for a, an article that includes the terms internet and media, and they need to be within three words of each other, uh, you would use the uh, search uh, operator capital N slash three. Um, now Google is different again, but it it's, uh, operates on a similar basis, but it uses the word around instead of near. So it does also require the number. So you need to have 
uh, two words. So for example, here we've got Apple and iPhone, and there must be no more than four words apart for you to be, uh, when you use the term around four. And obviously this is quite handy because you want those two words to be associated, but they don't necessarily have to be, it might be um, iPhone, Apple red iPhone, and, and that will still be returned to you. So proximity is a, takes a little bit of thinking out and uh, is only going to be used in specific circumstances, but can be useful to have in the back of your mind. So this is, has been a very brief summary of advanced search techniques and strategies. They are useful to have in the back of your mind at all times. Even if you don't remember exactly how to use them, it's good to know that those things are possible so that if you do come up with a particularly tricky search or something that's particularly in-depth that you want to investigate, you know that you can go looking for them and how you might use them.